Hi friends, welcome back to my family. Family? What? <laughs> Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I decided to make another video. I'm already losing it, I can tell. And that's because I've already filmed this video before, but there were audio issues, so I have to film it again and just like hope and pray that the audio issues are gone this time. Today's video is kind of a little update, kind of a little what am I reading, and talking to you guys about some new things that are happening in my bookish life. It's currently April while I'm filming this, and when the video is going up, it's gonna hopefully still be April, but I feel like every month has a little tagline that goes with it. Like right now is Indie April, and that's supposed to promote reading indie books. And I've been thinking for a while, like, oh, I'm gonna show you guys some indie books that I'm reading, but Indie April's already halfway done, so I need to show you the freaking books that I'm reading. This, of course, did just coincidentally line up with Indie April. I'm actually starting a whole series where every month I'm going to read three to four indie books and teach you guys about some books you might not have heard of before. And I'm doing this for a lot of reasons that are kind of all coming together into this video, and you'll, you'll see what I mean by that in a second, but I have a lot of independently published books that have been sent to me by authors and publicists and marketing people and I do my best to get through them but I've really fallen behind like I, I feel really bad I've fallen quite a bit behind I have a huge backlog of indie books especially ebooks because I'm just not good at reading ebooks and if you're listening to this and you're like what what is an indie book I just read books I don't understand. If you break it down, there are essentially two ways to publish a book. There are other ways too, but like there's two big ways. There is traditional publishing, which is most of the books behind me here are traditionally published books. And then there are indie books, independently published books by self-published authors. The big difference is basically traditional publishing belongs to those big publishers you've heard of like Tor, Orbit, HarperCollins, Hachette, Penguin, Random House, etc., etc. And authors that work with them usually have an agent and the agent is the one that works with the publisher and it's sort of a big process involving a lot of different people. They have in-house editors and graphic designers, things like that. So it's a big, big, big production that works very slowly, but the author is not the one footing the bill for everything that's happening with the book. Whereas independently published authors are publishing the books themselves. They're not working through a big publishing house. They are hiring their own editors, their own graphic designers. Maybe they're doing those things themselves and not hiring anyone. And these books are usually available mostly in an electronic format through Amazon and things like that, or they do produce a physical book and I've got some here with me, but it's a lot more terrifying, stressful, in my opinion. I've not done either. But one of the biggest ways that indie authors get the word out about their books is by reaching out to influencers, which is still like such an eh, eh word to use to describe myself, but you know, reaching out to people in the bookish community and either selling them their books or gifting them their books in exchange for reviews and promotion. And I get reached out to a lot and I accept most books if they're fantasy, sci-fi or horror. And I really try, I really do try to get to all of them, but it's hard because I'm also reading all of my normal books that I'm reading for fun and for book clubs and for buddy reads and for other themed videos. And as part of my in real life job at my bookstore, I am the consignment manager, which means I work with independent authors in real life to get their books into the stores, which involves reading their books to make sure they're appropriate for the store. So I'm reading tons of indie books that way. And then I've actually started writing and reviewing in two separate capacities that are mostly surrounding indie books. So like everything is, is indie right now. Indie April is real for me. <laughs> This has been an extremely long introduction. I know there's been info in it, but it's still the introduction technically of the video because I want to talk to you about three things in this video. I want to talk about Readsy, I want to talk about SFF Insiders, and I want to tell you what four books I'm reading for Indie April. So first let's talk about Readsy. You may have heard of Readsy before. They're essentially a tools platform for new authors or aspiring authors you can go on there and you can hire professional editors and graphic designers and whatnot for your indie book but they also have a sort of sister platform or a tangential platform called Readsy Discovery and indie authors can upload their books on Readsy Discovery in an electronic form and have those books available for purchase after their launch date 
in order to promote the books prior to launch date and then after launch date help people decide if that's what they want to read, if the book is worth their time. Readsy hires in-house reviewers, which is what I am doing. So I get early access to books and only one reviewer gets to review a book. So if I select a book, no one else gets to review that book until after the launch date. It's a lot of pressure. It means I have to finish it because I would feel awful if I screwed that up and I've been doing okay so far. <laughs> so yeah, I get early access to these new indie books. They give a little blurb on what it's about. They say the genre, they give a word count, etc. Most recently, I read The Little Time Allotted Us, which I'll post up here. This was an awesome, really, really awesome, actually, sort of space opera set in the real world, but in the future. And it's a military sci-fi and it was very fun. It was very detailed and emotional and did tackle some real world problems. So that was super cool. It is available for purchase now. It has been launched and I had a great time. It's by Laura Packett. I didn't say that before. I, I was actually like really stunned by that book and it was it was awesome. It was my first one that I have reviewed on Readsy Discovery and it was a great introduction to the platform. I have also joined the SF <laughs> I have also joined the SFF Insiders community as a reviewer slash writer. SFF Insiders is not the easiest name to say, but it stands for Science Fiction Fantasy Insiders. This originally started out as a Discord community, just posting people that love science fiction and fantasy, um, to do buddy reads, to talk about what they're currently reading, to post small reviews, to chat in a voice chat channel, lots of cool things and a really fun, tight-knit community. Just this past year, they actually launched a website, which is sffinsiders.com, and it is now a professional review platform. I have written for a couple of review platforms in the past, not talking about Readsy, but I've, I've written for some other smaller websites as well. And I have always enjoyed my time. It's something I find really fun, but I'm not lying when I say the SFF Insiders community is the best one I've written for so far. It is such a great team. It's such a fun place to interact and to talk about books. And everyone who's writing for the site is like truly passionate about science fiction and fantasy, obviously, but also about promoting indie books, which is really important. I know I keep talking about Indie April and it's like, this is the month to read Indie, but every month is the month to read Indie. And the website doesn't only do reviews, they do other types of articles as well as helping with cover reveals and like insider news, hence the name insiders, insider news within the bookstram and book community. And I absolutely love it. I'm gonna link below both the website and the Discord. You can join the Discord whenever you want and come hang out. You can check out reviews on the website and just come talk to us. and be part of the super fun thing. It's very wholesome, which is not something you can say about a lot of the book community online these days, okay? My first review is going up, I believe, on the 15th of April. It's not an indie book. It's a, another book that I just finished reading, but I'm gonna have some indie reviews coming up, um, which leads me right into what am I reading for indie April? Because my first review of an indie book is going to be one of the books I'm talking about now. Last year, I received a copy of The Kinslayer by S.K. Putt. I have already read this, but it was originally sent to me as an EPUB because he's an Australian author and I'm in Canada, so it's kind of hard to get a physical copy to me. I adored the book. It's, it's really, really good. And then this year, he's actually come out with the paperback and he sent me one signed and personalized as a gift. And I'm so grateful because I'm so excited to reread it. This copy is so beautiful like don't look at the spoilers but there's art throughout it it's really well designed and i just finished reading the hunger of the gods which got me in the mood for bloody epic norse viking mythology inspired stuff and that's what this is so i'm going to be giving this a reread so that i can write a review for sff insiders of this book if you're a fan of john gwynn or tilda cold holt you know the the hanged god series this is definitely one to check out. It's available. I'll put the purchase link in the uh, description as well. But thank you again, SK Putt, for sending me a copy of this. He's working on merch and a novella right now, which is also cool. The next book I'm going to be reading in April was also gifted to me by an indie author. It's The Huntsman's War by Bennett Barkley. This is a lovely short novella, which I really appreciate because I'll be able to get through it so quickly. You know I love novellas, you know. And I love this cover. Can I just say that? I love this cover. 
This is a story of a huntsman, a former soldier who's now working in the service of the God of Light. This is a story about a holy war and it's only just the beginning of a bigger series. Um, it's part one of the Foundations anthology. I did flip through it when it was first sent to me and the writing is really snappy and visceral and I'm excited for this. It seems really epic. I'm doing that thing again where I, I just end every sentence with and I'm so excited for this. I'm so excited. I'm so excited you guys. Okay. <laughs> Next is a book that I'm scared to read because it's so big, but that's fine. I'm okay with that. It's Dark Blade Assassin by Andy Pelican. This is the first book in an enormous series, which is another reason I'm a little daunted to read it. Andy is a fellow Canadian author. He lives out on the West Coast. And while there are like eight books, I think in this series, he's working on the ninth one right now, he's got like 45 books. <laughs> so yeah. This is an author where if you're one of those people like me, where once you find an author you like, you immediately buy their entire backlist, you'll have a lot to read from him. Andy is actually a great example of what I was talking about before, about working with indie authors to get their books into physical stores, because blending the bookstagram community and my real life job together, Andy is actually one of the authors that I've been able to contract with to have his books in our stores. He sent them over to me and I would call it a success story so far. This is a story obviously of assassins, crime syndicates, and like I said, it's an enormous series. So I'm gonna buckle down and I'm gonna get through it. It's gonna take a little bit. How long is this one? Something crazy, I already know. I don't want, don't read it, don't read it. End of book one, 661 pages. And the fourth book that I want to talk about for Indie April is one that I actually purchased myself kind of on a whim. I haven't heard anything about this book, but the cover, is so beautiful. It's Winter Harvest by Iona Papadopoulou. I'm not good with Greek names, I'm sorry. This is a Greek mythology retelling, and I know I just did a video talking about how I'm done with Greek mythology retellings, but I lied. It's the cover, it's the cover for me. I think this is stunning. This is a retelling of the story of Demeter and Cora. Cora is Persephone, she has two names, but this is focused on Demeter, who is Cora's mother. Having read the first couple of pages, this seems like a very, very dark retelling, which I, I do like, but it, I would check some trigger warnings if you're gonna pick this one up. I also think that I have never read a Greek mythology retelling by a Greek author before. I talked about this in my retellings video where Greek mythology has kind of been appropriated by white Westerners and we're like, this is our thing now. We did this, we are Greek mythology. Or not. <laughs> but yes, I'm going to be reading this. I'm very excited for, I'm doing it again. I'm very excited. <laughs> Stop. And those are just the books for April. Like I said, I'm trying to start a series. So I already know what I'm gonna be reading in May. I have a horror book, a sort of dystopian sci-fi, and then Barnaby the Wanderer, which is behind me here. And that's another like 800 plus page book. <sighs> yeah. And I have planned like eight months of content for this series already because I have a lot of books to talk about, you guys. You can probably check out reviews on SFF Insiders for all the books I just showed you uh, in the future. If you're watching this down the road, I've probably reviewed them and they're probably on SFF Insiders, just not yet if you're watching it on the day it releases. Once again, I will post all the links below the purchase links for those books as well as the Discord and site links for SFF Insiders. I'll post a site link for Readsy Discovery, although I'm not like pushing that one too hard. It's just a fun thing that I'm doing. And again, just as a reminder, I have a business email in my description. If you're an indie author and you want me to check out your book, I'm super, super happy to do that. I know I've got some sitting in my inbox right now that I haven't responded to yet, but I will, don't worry. I, I just have a lot of emails, so I'm getting to it. But yeah, send me an email if you, have a book that you want me to read or or know of a book you want me to check out. I love indie books and I don't only read them in April, I read them year round. So yeah, thanks again guys for sticking around for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell icon so you know when I upload new videos, I upload two days a week. I love you guys, goodbye.